Well, not too many um, sporting tabloids we have today, but the uh, midweek edition of the show is here with us. And for the next 90 minutes, we'll be running through the various sporting disciplines that we have on the show. For you this morning, we're going to be looking at the friendly international between Ghana and uh, Japan. Ghana after that result against Zambia this time around, failing to get a result against the Blue Samurai. We'll be bringing you highlights of uh, that game together with other friendly international matches that were honored all over the globe. Spain in a 2 0 draw with uh, Chile and Brazil defeated Portugal by three goals to one. We'll be bringing you all that and more together with World Cup qualifiers that were played in Europe and in South America. Argentina are there and quite a number of European nations are also there. We'll also be bringing you an um, exclusive interview we had with uh, John Pencil, um, uh, Ketsi uh, Metro TV. Um, he's been talking about um, his issue, uh, domestic issues, of course, that have gone a long way to affect uh, his uh, career. You'll be listening to that interview and I'm sure you're going to um, have a lot to say about that. All this and more coming up after this break. Well, you to make sure... Uh, to Dado Jr. every Monday and Friday, um, 19 hours GMT is uh, the time and you get to follow all the news from the world of football. As usual, we start with the sporting tabloids and this morning I have uh, the graphic sports and the 90 minutes. Let's begin with the graphic sports and uh, what do they have on their front page for us? All set for Blue Premier League season 2013, season 2014. Are the clubs themselves prepared? Well, we'll be speaking to uh, one or two officials uh, on the show to find out how their teams are preparing for the season's uh, Global Premier League. And of course, that friendly international that was played between Ghana and uh, Japan at the Yokohama International Stadium. Richard Kisi uh, Boating uh, starting that game, on, but unfortunately, um, he was on the losing side. Ghana losing by three goals to one to the Blue Samurai. All those and more on the front page of uh, the Graphic Sports. Make your way to the niche stands, uh, grab a copy and get to read extensively on these stories. Let's move on to our lifestyle page and who are we profiling today? Well, the man who made it to the semi-final of the U.S. Open, unfortunately losing to Novak Djokovic, uh, Stanislav Vavrinka, the Swiss international tennis player, has been profiled by the Graphic Sports today. We move on to the center spread of the paper. And, um, well, it has our pictures of uh, the U.S. Open. Rafa Nadal coming out tops in that uh, thriller, four-set thriller against Novak Djokovic. And Serena Williams winning her 17th Grand Slam title together with our pictures from uh, the friendly international between Ghana and Japan. Let's move on to the back page of uh, the graphic sports. And uh, what do we have there? Black Stars Crash Land story by Michael Quay. And it has to do with that 3-1 defeat to the Blue Samurai yesterday. Full story there by Michael Quay. And of course, the build-up to the Globe Premier League season 2013, season 2014. That's it for the graphic sports. Uh, make your way to the newsstands, uh, grab a copy of uh, the paper and get to read extensively on uh, the stories in there. Let's move on to the 90 minutes. And on the front page of uh, the 90 minutes, uh, you have uh, Montari welcomes Kaka competition. Well, Kevin Prince Watting has since left uh, uh, Milan, so I'm not too sure where the competition is going to be coming from, from uh, Ricardo Kaka, who plays uh, in a triquitista role um, for Milan, and like he did for Real Madrid as well. Sulimuntari clearly does not play in that position. Andre Dede, are you almost always finding his uh, picture on the front page of the 90 minutes for one reason or the other? Um, he is there as well. Somewhere to too. What's the latest on him? Well, we understand that uh, he's uh, quitting. The Indomitable Lions will be bringing you um, some bite of his uh, former international teammate Patrick Nboma on Eto's retirement in the course of the program. And on the back page of uh, the 90 minutes, uh, you have, uh, well, one for the memories, I guess. Seven up here. 
and uh, John Menster. Stephen Appiah used to be skipper of the senior national team, the Black Stars, and he handed over the armband to John Menster. The two players, as a result of uh, injuries, um, have uh, barely had a looking at uh, football in the last um, 18 months plus. Hopefully, they are going to be finding clubs pretty shortly. Some very expensive shoes there. Well, these guys make a lot of money, so it's understandable that they're always looking good and always uh, dressed uh, very well. Very expensive clothing, uh, if you ask me. Let's move on now and look at us. You know, the stories that we have for you this morning. Yesterday, uh, Ghana played Japan in a friendly international at the Yokohama International Stadium. After that 2-1 win over Zambia, well, quite a number of players, we understand, were excused for this game. Top-notch players, if you like. And uh, the manager had to uh, fall on second-string players. He said he wanted to have a look at other players uh, just in case, you know, um, the regular starters were not available and how he was going to be using these other players. Well, it did not go very well for Ghana as we lost by three goals to one to the Blue Samurai. Catch the GTV, we bring you the highlights of that game. In the defense of the Stars. Oh, that was a real chance to Karataki as the Black Stars keep moving here. Too many chances and the Black Stars will get a goal. Mm. And that is it. Frankie Champon get to score his first goal as a senior player. Oh, against the run of play when the Japanese missed there, the Black Stars have to come so strong. And there you have it. Lovely goal from Frankie Champon, who has just graduated from the under-20 team to the Black um, The Stars have struggled, creating the opportunities, and once they got it, this was absolutely brilliant from Abdul Majid Waris. And um, you find Frankie Champon with his foot, well, with a, uh, a bit of luck with the well you see the that was a deflection there deflection of the player but hey he took his luck and the stars have their noses in front it doesn't really oh, lovely pass there to Shinji Kagawa and Shinji Kagawa trying to get some space here to go for a shot and gets it and that's a brilliant goal from Shinji Kagawa he's had the chance he's been wasting it and allowing the black stars to come out with Honda with a chance here and still the Japanese team with a chance to get a second goal as they get straight into the 18-yard box. Oh, what a chance for them to get a second goal. And well, the Japanese again will be so confident having to initiate attack and getting straight to the Black Stars in the 18-yard box. And with a chance here for them to get a second goal. And that is, is the second goal. The Japanese, well, Endo, the man who's played be another chance for the Japanese with the kick from uh, Endo in the 18 yard box of uh, the Black Stars and that's the third goal and came through from who? Honda a oh, lovely cross there from Endo beautiful combination from these two players so beautiful it was from Endo picking up Honda and you definitely will be so struck with this particular goal Rabiu there you have the Black Stars watching things on. A lovely cross and it was John Boy just right in front of Honda. And Honda gets to score, making it 3-1. I think it was very important playing in the Confederations Cup gave them a lot of uh, confidence. Never mind that they did not make a huge... Black Stars with the opportunity here to score. And Mahatma Otu, oh! Trademark of scoring lots of balls. Are we again losing possession? Endo picks up his man with the Japanese going Shinji Kago and now it's Honda and Brimer tries to uh, grab it for the first time, but that again was a uh, corner kick quickly affected. And Brimer comes out again and lifts the port down, and the Japanese will get a chance here to make it four. And again, it's been serious of defending for the Black Stars. Oh, well, that was moment for the Black Stars to defend. But just look at the goalkeeper. Couldn't get it for the first time. That was moment for the Black Stars to defend. But just look at the goalkeeper. 
couldn't get it for the first time. And the last stars will have a chance here to break Mahatma Oti. And Waris combining beautifully. With Waris still fighting for the ball. And Christopher probably will be wrestling for the end of the game with the Japanese team. Really having a chance to be the black stars again. And there you have it at the end of the entire game. It's an international friendly game at the Nissan Stadium in Japan. The black Franco Champo was scoring his first goal for Ghana, but unfortunately that was not enough to get a result over the Blue Samurai uh, yesterday. Um, well, the Japanese had uh, virtually everyone on uh, board, and it wasn't surprising that the likes of uh, uh, Honda and uh, Shinji Kagawa were on target for them. These are top-notch experienced internationals, and when you come up against them on any day, it, it was always going to be a big ask uh, to ask uh, these uh, uh, lads to get a result at the Yokohama International Stadium. Well, they made us proud. Three goals to one, um, not a very bad scoreline, uh, looking at the fact that we didn't go with our top international stars. And still on this game, and a former Black Stars defender, Joado, was on our, our Sports Night program yesterday. And he was saying that um, although we have uh, lost by three goals to one to the Japanese, um, the Ghanaian should not be in a hurry to castigate the lads for their performance. Let's have a listen to his take on the game. It's good for the coach to see uh, this player. A lot of people are saying that it's a second string team and that I don't buy into that. I, I don't think any, apart from Frankie Champon, who is a, is a debutant for this game, I think every single player there has played for the national team before. You know, maybe Chipsa. They say Gary. when the big boys are available, these who players are the don't big, have started. Who are, who are the big boys? They were well, the that's big what boys. they say. Well, <laughs> the big boys, the only players who has a position on this team, I think, is Asamoah Jan because he, we need him every time as a striker to score for us. Today he wasn't there, we didn't get a goal, we, we got one. But he, I think, warrants the voting. And of course, he's the captain also, so he should be playing all the time. But apart from that, the other players who didn't show up or who didn't make the trip, we've played without them. We've played without Andre, we've played without Michael, we've played without Kodua Samoa, we played without Wakasu, we played without. Uh, Rabi. Uh, Ra no, Rabi. Rabi played. Rabi you know, we played without Kevin. We played without them before, and we've won. So I don't buy into that. It was, an, uh, 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 it was an exercise for the coach to see the players and how to use them in case we are in a tournament or we are in a competitive game. This is just a friendly game and, you know, we shouldn't take, buy in, into too much. Of, of so some people took it very seriously. Well, they should <laughs> because the, the excuse that was given to us, the public, was that we are going to play in Japan to improve our CD. You know, uh, I find that comical because <laughs> for us to think we will go to Japan and beat them, I find it very interesting. Uh, that we are going to beat them to get a better seeding. I mean, Japan is playing their home. Today, when I saw their squad, I was shocked. They had Everyone. every single player. You guys are so crazy and passionate about their football in South America. Every game matters. You have to play up to 16 games if you want to make it to uh, Brazil 2014. Argentina almost there with that two games to spare. Quite a number of countries also making sure that they got enough points that will take them through to Brazil 2014. Let's still stay with issues concerning the World Cup and Ghana are likely to be without the services of uh, star defender Harrison Afo as a result of the second yellow card. Uh, the yellow card he picked in that game against the Zambia that has ruled him out of uh, the playoff game that is uh, going to be against one of these uh, five countries. Of course, I'm sure you know them by now. We are either going to be coming up against uh, Cameroon, uh, Senegal, Burkina, uh, Faso, Egypt or Ethiopia. Still on uh, the senior national team, the Black Stars, who were involved in the friendly international against uh, Japan yesterday, where we are gathering from the corridors of power of the Ghana Football Association, is uh, that that friendly international against that uh, Brazil that was scheduled uh, to come over later this year has uh, been called off. Uh, reasons are still not too clear as to why the scheme has been called over. I'm sure our communications director of the Ghana Football Association, Ibrahim Sanidara, as and when the team makes his way down here from uh, Japan, will be given further insight into that game. 
We we'll still stay with uh, issues concerning uh, Ghana and uh, Egyptian international Ahmed Hussamidu is in the news. Well, he has retired from uh, football, but he's saying that uh, Ghana is the one country that he would want the Egyptians to avoid. The Egyptians have been under some very good form under American uh, boss uh, Bob uh, Bradley and uh, are looking very good to make another World Cup appearance. The last time Egypt were at the World Cup was in 1990, having made an earlier World Cup appearance in 1934 and he's saying that he would want the Egyptians to avoid Ghana. We stay with uh, Egyptian football and Mohamed Ahmed Abu Traika. Well, very familiar face uh, on the African continent and, of course, um, on the global scene. He won his 100th cap. Not everybody gets to play 100 games for his nation. He won his 100th cup yesterday and the World Cup qualifier against Guinea. The Egyptians winning that game. They have already qualified going into that final round game. And they are going to be one of five countries that are going to be in port two for the playoffs for Brazil 2014 on the African continent. Away from uh, Egyptian football, we go into Nigeria now. And uh, John obi Mikel is in the news. Uh, the Chelsea star was voted man of the match in that game against uh, Malawi. And uh, he uh, celebrated the Tom Tom award that he was given. He was particularly excited um, at winning that award and is looking forward to a lot more honors when Nigeria go into action. One moment the player is being praised uh, for doing very well. The next moment the player is being lambasted for chickening out of that friendly international against Burkina Faso yesterday. The Nigerians may have won by four goals to one, but uh, Nigeria, led by goalkeeper Vincent Enyama, have accused John Obi Mikel of faking an injury that ruled him out of that friendly international yesterday. And according to reports emanating from Nigeria, uh, some of the players in the Nigerian team have not been happy with the players' uh, actions and uh, um, have, uh, you know, literally um, accused uh, the technical team of. Uh, literally uh, swaying to the whims and caprices of uh, some of these Nigerian international stars anytime friendly games come up. We still stay with uh, Nigeria and the uh, Nigerian football and uh, central defender uh, Omerio uh, is also in the news. Uh, he was uh, a part of the Nigerian team that made it to the final of the African Cup of Nations in South America where Nigeria defeated Burkina Faso by three goals uh, to one. Uh, the player has been in there an injury for some time and where we're getting from his uh, club Chelsea is that the player is now fit and raring to go. Um, he was on loan last season in uh, Holland and uh, is back fit. Uh, maybe Chelsea would give him a round of games in uh, season 2013, uh, season 2014. A Nigerian and a Cameroonian connection this time around. And Chelsea technical director uh, Michael Minalo, a former Nigerian international himself, has uh, revealed that Chelsea signed Samuel Leto as a result of uh, Wayne Rooney's uh, snap. Well, Jose Mourinho clearly did state at earlier press conferences that he had a plan A, plan B, and a plan C. The plan A, everyone did know that was a setting Wayne Rooney. Um, Chelsea finally had to give up the chase of Wayne Rooney and sign Samuel Eto'o, who at 32 is going to be at 117,000 euros a week, some amount of money if you ask me and uh, focusing on that same player it's, it's it's all very confusing at this uh, particular point Cameroonian coach Volker Finka has refused to confirm reports that Samuel Leto has retired from international football the player was said to have said his uh, goodbyes if you like to um, his uh, team when they defeated um, the opponents Libya and the final World Cup qualifying game in Yaoundé over the a weekend. But Cameroonian coach Volker Finka is refusing to confirm the reports that Samuel Leto has uh, retired. Now, still staying with this uh, particular story, um, former Cameroonian international star uh, Patrick Mboma has been... Uh, uh, you know, expressing his thoughts on this particular Eto story. Let's have a listen to what uh, Patrick and Boma had to say concerning this. And uh, I'm not in front of him today to, to speak and know what he feels inside, but uh, I'm not sure he can leave the, 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 the national team like that, you know. Uh, it was a difficult week he spent with the national team, 
uh, with the same troubles with uh, the federation. I've been uh, told that uh, he was uh, he had also some uh, issues with the national uh, head coach. It's probably the moment we we'll say that uh, we we'll, we'll let him say that he will uh, leave and resign from national team. I don't think it will uh, last long. He will probably think about it. He has a chance to to play a, a fourth uh, World Cup uh, in his career, but he's a much massive. Was uh, Patrick in Boma uh, sharing his uh, thoughts on uh, this uh, particular uh, game? Let's move away from. Uh, um, Cameroonian international star Patrick N. Boma and uh, look at the Malawian uh, team uh, led by its uh, manager, um, Saint-Tifé. Well, the Mal uh, Malawian international um, coach uh, are saying, the Malawians are saying that they can hold on to the um, their coach anymore as a result of the fees uh, that he would uh, charge. And at this particular point, Malawi having failed to make it to the next stage of uh, the competition, the Malawi and the FA are deciding um, to uh, dispense with the services of the Belgian coach. Well, uh, away from uh, the Malawian and, um, story, let's now do uh, something on uh, Zambia. And this time around, we're looking at uh, Zambian international uh, Redford Kalaba, who is calling for early preparations by the Chipolo Polo. Uh, the Zambians have failed to make it to the next stage of uh, their competition when they came up against uh, Zambia in the final leg of uh, the World Cup qualifying here at the Kumasa Sports Stadium, Ghana, getting a 2-1 result that saw them make it to the next stage of the competition. You're still live here on Sports Today. We're going to be going for a quick commercial break at the point, And then when we come back, we keep you up to speed with more news on the continent and beyond. You stick and stay with us. We're back from the break and still live here on Joy Sports and Motor TV versus Sports today. And uh, we're still focused on issues concerning football. And uh, this time around, are still in the camp of Zambia. Uh, they are scheduled to play a high-profile international friendly um, against uh, Brazil. Well, it doesn't come every day. Ghana was scheduled to play the Brazilians earlier, but the senior national team, the Black Stars, have cancelled that particular friendly, and the Zambians have taken advantage of this, and uh, will be playing the uh, Chipolopolo later this year. To Germany and uh, to some bets on uh, Ghanaian international Kevin Prince Boateng. Well, he has made a transition from Milan to the Veltins uh, Arena and uh, there's been an issue concerning the chief financial officer of the club, uh, Peter Peters. Now, he was uh, said to have made uh, statements concerning the players' movement from uh, the Estadio Giuseppe Miata to the Veltins Arena. And he did say that Kevin's move was as a result of uh, racial consent. Well, the CFO has since come out to retract those words and has apologized to the club and its fans. And uh, he is said to have also personally apologized to the player as a result of uh, these unfortunate comments. And uh, one player who uh, was doing very well uh, playing for the senior national team and, of course, uh, playing for quite a number of clubs in England. He played for West Ham, I recall. He played for Fulham as uh, well. He was a part of the Ghana team that played at the 2006 World Cup in uh, Germany. And uh, you, you remember that incident in the game between Ghana and Czech Republic where he celebrated with an Israeli flag. And you know who I'm talking about now. John Pencil, now now. Earlier this year, yeah, the player had domestic issues uh, that seems to have affected his uh, career. Now, over the weekend, uh, John Pencil was uh, on uh, Metro TV and, uh, you know, told the world how these uh, domestic issues have affected his uh, career. Let's have a listen to John Pencil. I went to Israel, Israel. Uh, so Maccabi Tel Aviv. Yeah, mm, okay. then before I moved, after two years, I moved to Hapoel Tel Aviv. Then two years after, I moved to West Ham. Okay. Yeah. Then two years after West Ham, I moved to Fulham. Okay. After three years. And after three years, Leicester City. You've then had that, a wonderful career. <laughs> yeah. How the police treat the case and also how the media also carry the, the team to the net. Because mm -hmm. today, everything that you write on the net, everyone picks it everyone and then it, it goes around. Yeah. And I'm innocent about um, all the, the news that was published about me innocent. stabbing my wife. And I mean, nobody that has brain or in my, in my career level will do such thing. 
So you did not stab her? No, no, no. Such things didn't happen. I mean, even right now, we are, we are okay, we are good, we're looking after the, our kids, we're looking okay. I mean, so, I mean, what they wrote against me, you know, that has also uh, caused my career and my, uh, my job. Every team that I go, they just go, go, and it comes out. Uh, let, me, let me get this straight. Because of the incident with your wife, you having problems with your career right now? Very, very. Because same thing happened. Um, like, I don't want to say this, but I will say this. What happened before the case happened was my wife took my passport, ran to my neighbor's house, gave it to my neighbor, which I don't want to mention the man's name, but he knows okay. himself. And they kept their passport for two weeks. So after it was published that my club has terminated my contract, that was when I received a call from Senna Radio that somebody brought my passport to them, that person claiming that he, the person took the passport from Seco. That, but I didn't want any John case. John Penso's passport at Seco. That, yes. that is like one of the weird yes. things that you and could I have know, here. I believe that the, my wife took it and she told me that they gave it to the neighbor. Why, why, did she, why did she take it? I don't know. And she, she didn't even, want you to travel? She, she missed you maybe, you know, <laughs> you know, we women, we can do crazy yeah, things Yeah, because at that time she was a bit upset about what was happening in the house. And I mean, it's normal that um, my, my man, my woman, I mean, have problems sometimes. But um, the way things go, I didn't like it the way she took the passport to the neighbor and the neighbor also kept the passport. She went there to beg the neighbor and the wife to release the passport. The man swore to God that they don't have the passport. So they kept the passport for two weeks while my club was also waiting for me after the nation. And you had to travel to go sign your contract? No, I have to go and continue. Continue your contract. contract? Yeah. And there too, uh, there's only five professionals allowed to play for the team. So whilst I wasn't there, I wasn't coming, they tried to contact me and I told them I can't find my passport. So they went ahead and bring in a new professional to get five. So after two weeks getting my passport and went there, I was the sixth one, so I couldn't play. I was freeze. They won't pay you, they won't do anything. You have to stay down to the end of the season. And when you're not playing, it also affects you. No team will see you and, and, get you, and give you opportunity to establish it. So for me, um, it's been um, a tough time for me now, but I will use this opportunity to advise our media that we all work together. Okay. So such thing, we should address it well and also uh, investigate it before Absolutely. we publish sightings. Because right now as I'm talking, if I'm lying, you can go on net and go away. I know. I blame the neighbor this. because um, I think the neighbor has something against me and I, there's somebody I don't know, I've never seen, I never agreed before until that day when the incident happened. My, for him to keep my passport for two weeks, which I knew. Well, somebody yeah. asked that maybe, did your wife tell him to keep the passport and when you come, they should say they, they don't have it? No, you know? I was there when, they, when my wife went there to beg, crying, lying on the floor. And because the man, the man assaulted me and I assaulted him too. So he, he went assaulted to, you? Yes, in his house because I went there to get my passport and he came and slapped me from behind. I slapped him back. Of course. So he called police that uh, stabbed my wife. So he, it was the neighbor who was pushing the, the, the case story. for, yeah. So I can't blame the woman. I mean, people get upset, they do things, and then later they regret. And I can't sit down here and say that because of her, that's why my job is uh, at stake or anything. But it's the neighbor that I will, I will blame. A very sad story indeed, and I recall being at the Ligona Police uh, Station where John, Mensa, um, John Pinto had to uh, sign some bill or documents to get him out. A very um, sad story. I thought that some of these issues uh, could have been sorted out domestically. Uh, why, you know, they allowed it to go into the full glare of uh, the public, uh, for me, uh, remains very difficult to comprehend. But, well, these things happen sometimes, and unfortunately, uh, that has affected the player. He's struggling to get a club as uh, we speak, and looking at the player, he still has quite a number of years uh, still to play uh, uh, for, you know, any team that would want to sign him. But all these things have uh, cost him in uh, recent times. Uh, we can only hope uh, that uh, someone uh, would uh, give John a chance to show what he can also uh, do.
Uh, let's uh, keep up with uh, a lady uh, who made uh, the princesses and uh, the maidens uh, proud uh, when um, she used to feature for them. She managed to secure a scholarship uh, to the United States, and it's no other person than uh, Florence uh, Datsun. Well, she's making um, her school, Robert uh, Morris uh, University, very proud. Uh, we understand that uh, she was scoring goals uh, for fun. Uh, well, she's been scoring goals for fun, and... Uh, she was in action uh, over the weekend where she scored up to five goals in a game for her side. Well, the last time I saw her, she had uh, bogged up. Uh, she looked uh, very uh, different from uh, the same Florence Datsun that I used to uh, see. Of course, uh, she's, she's uh, on a good training regimen and, of course, uh, some good dieting as uh, well. And I'm sure that has played a very key role uh, to how far um, she has uh, come with her club. Let's do another um, shorter round of our commercials at this point. And when we come back, um, it's... Uh, just a few days away from match day one of the Global Premier League, we'll be speaking to some of the clubs to find out how they are preparing for the new season. We'll be back after this break. Well, we're building up to the Globe Premier League season 2013, season 2014, and uh, up to 16 clubs are going to be playing in the Globe Premier League. Hopefully, we're going to be uh, getting to speak to some officials of uh, some of uh, the clubs to find out how they're preparing for the new season. But my colleague, uh, George Adu uh, Jr., also hit the streets to find out uh, what Ghanaians make over the upcoming league season. This is what they had to say. In this September, but I just forgot about the date. I hope, you said this, this week, uh, so I hope this year the league, they will perform better than the last year, what they did. And I want the board to be talking to the referees, yes, because at times it's the referees that creates problems between the clubs. So I think that's what I will say. I'm expecting better uh, league this 2013 and next 2014 league, yes. How about your team? My team, Fabulous, I, I support as Santi Kotokola is my team. At the end of the day, the Globe people have been brought a lot of money. And um, I don't know, people have been choppy it like, I think, in Ghana, we don't think about ourselves. And then the money I've been going to, uh, left and right, left and right, who you know. So, I mean that, Charlie. We have to learn more and more because at the end of the day, we have to let the GFA know that they have to do the job well. Then we are going to see that everything is going to be all successful. That's the most important thing. But how about your team? Which team do you support? Accra has full international. But of course, they are winning the league again. No bad way, but Accra has full are going to win the league. Are you sure? But of course, they win. Do you know something? Now, uh, uh, when was the day a class of folk play with uh, this team? I think that there's, there's, there's no scores. Go, let's draw. But us play, but they haven't got a goal. You think, but a class of folk are going to win the, the league. Man, uh, uh, the league. Sure about that one? I'm telling you honestly. Nana Kwesi Mazula has been telling you. For this year... This Premier League, well, the way we see things as this uh, season, we saw things are uh, moving actually forward because the way all the guys from Europe and then the, how they w all came together and um, they put themselves together and we are able to overcome this Zambia for so many years, I think it's a good achievement. Yeah, it's a good, it's, it's, it's so a good thing. Okay, this year, this, the, the league, we want to see, uh, I mean, performance, good performance. And uh, we want to see, I mean, growth of, 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 of the, this very season, of the Premier Leagues. That uh, the, 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 the past seasons, the expectations was very poor. But this season, we want the expectations to be very high. I'm expecting the Premier League to go on well, as you were saying. I don't follow it actually well. What I'm expecting them to do is that they should make sure that all, the, all what Ghanaians are expecting must be go on well. Do you get me? Yeah, because I heard Glow is sponsoring the Premier League, 
but if they put money, if they invest their money inside, I can't see anything in it. All what I know is the money goes on to the people, top people there, and they have been using the money anyhow. So I want them to influence Ghanaians that now GLOW is sponsoring, so they are doing their job well. Oh, my expected that uh, my team, Fablos, will win. Uh, we will we'll take the cup again. Are you sure Fablos can take the Yes, I'm sure. Has a and the other oh, House of Oak, maybe the top force have they won't get. Oh, how? Oh, I'm sure. You're sure about that? Mediama yes. say, yes, yeah, they lost to you, but they will beat. They will try and... Oh, Mediama, they won't come. Mm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You're very sure. Uh, I'm a support, pure supporter. supporter. Uh, so why, what is making you confident? That... Oh, the confidence is what I know that it will be. That is why I'm saying about it. Uh, okay. So you mm. win it for the third consecutive time? Yes, and then it will be the third time again before we will leave to them. Okay. So then Hass will come. We are brothers. Also, uh, passionate fans of uh, the various clubs here in Ghana sharing your views on what they expect of, of their teams. Let me quickly go over to the phone lines now and get to speak to the PRO of Accra Hearts of Oka, Mohib Saib. Mohib, good morning. Good morning. And thank you so much for making time to speak to us. It's only uh, four days away from match day one of uh, the new season. How is Accra Hearts of Oak preparing for their game? Well, you're aware that uh, we've been preparing very feverishly. We had a very fantastic pre-season um, in terms of how smoothly everything went. We really didn't have any hiccups as far as our pre-season is concerned. So... Uh, we are very confident, but uh, beyond what we have done this season, we are expecting to put up a very good performance and compete uh, very strongly for whatever uh, new trophy that will be put up. Well, On the basis of uh, consistency, teamwork and cohesion, because uh, we have not lost many of our first team players during the uh, the office, with the exception of Mahatma, uh, our team is pretty much intact. Well, um, after your good run uh, towards the end of last season, there's um, a lot of expectation from the Phobian fraternity that you make them, uh, you know, at least win some honours this season. Are you setting any targets for yourself? Well, as a big club, um, Accra has so folk would always want to be competing for whatever trophy that there is. So we are looking at uh, playing very competitively and uh, aiming at winning um, the league, the FA Cup, and whatever trophies would pop up the course of the season. Talking about uh, Mahatma Otu, I mean, it, it's going to be uh, one big loss for your club. I mean, not having a player who can score up to 20 goals in a league season. Do you think that he has uh, been replaced? Well, in, in place of him has come uh, Selassie J. He got 10 goals with Anidaos. And we believe that for a player in his first season in the Premiership, that's very good return. Um, if a combination of himself and the strike partners can provide the number of goals that uh, Mahatma gave us, then we should be pretty fine. Okay, Mohib, thank you so much for your time and I will wish you well this season. You're welcome. Well, uh, Mohib Saeed is a PRO of uh, Accra Hearts of Oak. We'll go back to the phone lines again and get to speak to uh, Jerome Mochery, who is a member of the Communications Directorate of uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Jerome, good morning. Good morning, Kwame. And uh, congratulations uh, to your team for winning the Super Cup on Sunday. Is that supposed to, uh, you know, scare your other 15 opponents uh, going into the new season? I was, I was just going to ask you whether... You didn't expect that because, I mean, last year we won the Super Cup and that was a signal to the fact that we were going to defend our title. And if we are going by the same logic, I want to believe that we've already sent out a clear signal that this title, I mean, the 2013-2014 title 
again, it's going to be strongly defended by Kotobo. Well, uh, as usual, going into a new season with a, a porcupine family, um, issues of uh, the field uh, seems to uh, have dominated, uh, you know, um, the, the tabloids and uh, the airwaves for some time. Uh, has the club been able to get over all these issues and uh, looking forward to the new season? I, with, with the absence of, of a CEO and um, a substantive management directing affairs, I would say no. But then you also have to think that uh, we have been able to more or less disengage the issues in the boardroom from uh, uh, that of the technical team, or let me say on the pitch. Because for me, from where I sit, I think we had uh, a successful preseason where we played a number of matches against uh, lower division sides. And even when we played premiership teams, we were able to get the results that we were looking for. Um, the technical team, really, they've been saying that their preoccupation has not been with uh, getting goals or getting results per se, but looking at how the team, uh, and the, the, the combination of old and new players have been working. And from that point of view, I think we have been very successful. And that is a critical matter. The, the, the issues about management or the board, uh, and all those things that have gone on, I think uh, we have been able to deal with it in a certain manner and, and things appear to be stabilizing. On the technical side, I think we've done so much. We've done all that we had, we, we had to do in spite of all the difficulties. And that should tell people that if uh, the supposed storm, Kotoko was able to, to handle it, then uh, when the season finally opens on Sunday, we are really going to give our opponents a tough time. What about the uh, the new acquisitions that have come on board? Have they impressed you? Well, yeah, I can speak from the coach's uh, uh, point of view because he's a technical man. I, I have to confess that I, I did not watch any of the preseason matches. I only relied on information from the from the team manager and from the coach. And from what the coach told me last week, he has been very impressed. In fact, he mentioned names, and if I'm permitted, I, I would I would say that. Players like um, Jordan Opoku, uh, Yaya Mohammed, Michael Mensah, and uh, Christopher Pony, and all the guys who came on board, according to the coach, have really proven that they have a future with Kosovo and that they are going to be the key actors this season. And don't forget that some of the old guards like Michael Kufu and, and those, those who were there last season, for instance, Kopnev said, from what I gather from the coach, have really been impressive. And last Sunday, even though I didn't watch that much, all the people I've been talking to or who have been talking to me on the game were really impressed. And you see, sometimes we will say this is, this is only a game or it was only a game. But the point is, if things had gone wrong, you give me a wrong thing. And so if it went right, we, we just have to build on that and see what will happen during the season. Well, your, your fans uh, finally will want to see you retain the league and even go ahead and do a double or maybe a treble. Are you setting yourselves uh, those targets? I am sure that the, the first thing will be to defend, I mean, the league title. And I was in somebody yesterday that I think that going into this season, Kotoko must have three priorities. The first of which should be the, the appointment of a CEO and the formation of, of, of of a management team to take care of affairs, I mean, the day-to-day -day affairs of the club. The second, which obviously should be the Premier League. And then the third, uh, it's, it's going to be Africa. But, I mean, I, I always want to be sincere on this matter. I do not think that we have the financial muscle to, to, to compete in Africa. But uh, I am sure that we will we'll make an effort. And whether we can get to the ultimate, it's, it's another thing altogether. And do you have a squad uh, good enough to achieve uh, these uh, targets? I think that uh, from a start, I mean, from the prelims, I would say yes. But you and I know that when you progress in that competition, it becomes more and more difficult. And I would want to wait to see Kotoko start in the competition before I make any any prediction. But, I mean, if, if I'm to, to, to say what I feel now, then we you know. 
Okay, Jerome, uh, thank you so much for your time. And um, we wish Kumasi Asante Kotoko all the best uh, in the new season. Thank you so much. Uh, Jerome Machere is a member of uh, the Communications uh, Directorate of uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko Football Club. Well, they won the um, Super Cup over the weekend. And uh, the club, obviously, are looking forward to winning a lot more honours in the new season, the Division One League. Um, Borders also in the news. Well, they have announced their program for the new uh, season. Um, up to 48 clubs are going to be featuring in the Division One League. And uh, well, if you if you happen to be if you happen to be um, one of uh, these uh, 48 clubs, well, um, between uh, Tuesday, uh, September 10th, uh, that was yesterday, um, the the league board has released this timetable ahead of the start of the. 2013 2014 season. So, if you are one of the 48 clubs in uh, the Division One League, uh, get in touch uh, with the Division One League board to find out their uh, line of programming and uh, get to prepare your team. And maybe you would stand a chance of making it to the elite division. Um, a bit of uh, technical uh, challenges uh, in there, but the new man at the helm of affairs is going to be uh, Thomas uh, Batch. Uh, well, we understand that, that he's uh, coming in uh, with a bigger. Uh, plants and uh, uh, bigger thoughts on how the IOC should be run. Uh, Jack Roger uh, took over from Juan Antonio Samaranch in 2000 and uh, the Belgian is making way for another European uh, this time around. Uh, German. Well, on that note, we draw the curtains on this morning's edition of the show. Friday is the next stop for the program. Thanks to the team for production work and to the technical team as well. I say thank you very much. And for you out there, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.